All right, so we're going to look at number 75. Again, it's kind of a blended problem where you've got um, an acceleration um, of a rocket upward. So just regular old uniform acceleration, not specifically free fall acceleration. Um, it's going to reach, speed up and reach an altitude of 1,200 meters. And then we're going to treat it like an object that's launched upwards at a certain speed. Um, so it's going to go up going to slow down under the influence of gravity and then it's going to fall and speed up downward. Um, so on a lot of these, it's asking for the velocity of the rocket. So we want to know is, as it speeds up, speeds up, speeds up and reaches that height of 1200 meters, what is that top speed? And so we might think, you know, I need to go to the velocity equation to figure out A. So velocity equals acceleration times time plus starting velocity. The acceleration here is going to be the 3.2 meters per second upward. The starting velocity is going to be zero, but I don't yet know the time. So I'd love to get to that equation, but I want to do some work to try to find out how long it takes to get to that 1200 meter height. In other words, I want to know this time. So for B, it's actually asking for that time. So we're kind of doing them in reverse order here. And again, I know that kind of my velocity information, my equation, I don't have enough things to plug in yet to find time. But I do know something about the final position. So I could go to the position equation, the 1 half AT squared equation. And I should have enough information to solve for t. Let me zoom in a little bit. So what I know about position is I know after a certain amount of time, I do reach 1,200 meters. That's kind of like the, the position I'm interested in. One half of the acceleration would be one half times the upward acceleration that's caused by the rocket thrust. T squared, I don't know. If it's a rocket blasting off, its starting velocity here is zero. So this term drops. And then in terms of the starting position, you assume you're starting at the ground. So that term is also zero. So all we have to do to find the time it takes to reach 1,200 meters is solve for t. Let me grab my notes. So dropping the units kind of for simplicity um, half of 3.2 is going to be 1.6 t squared. So solving for t, I'm going to divide through by 1.6. take the square root to find t. And without rounding, I'm finding 27.386 and some extra decimal places. Um, if I'm strictly answering that from the problem, I've only got two significant figures here and here. So I would round that just to 27 seconds. Um, I'm going to use some extra digits when I plug that in, however, because I don't want to have rounding error at a previous step. So 27 seconds would be your answer for B. Now I can go here and say my acceleration was 3.2 meters per second per second. I'm going to plug in an extra digit, so I'm going to keep it as 27.4 seconds. 
starting velocity is zero, so again, that goes away. So the speed, the upward speed at the end of that acceleration phase is 87.7 meters per second, or we could call it 88 meters per second if we want two sig figs. So there's your answer for A. That is your answer for B. So now, again, I like to kind of visualize these a bit in terms of the graph. I know now that that top velocity reached is about 87 meters per second. I know that this time is roughly 27 seconds. Questions at that point? Okay, then it says, what maximum altitude does the rocket reach? That's talking about not the 1,200 meters, but how high does it get at the peak here? Okay. So again, I would like to go to the position equation, kind of resetting it for this part of the flight. So I'd like to go to the position equation. Now the acceleration is due to gravity. So it's going to be 1 half times negative 9.8 meters per second squared times t squared. And I don't know this time yet. I don't know how much more time passes for it to reach the peak. I'm going to need to do a little bit of work on that. The initial velocity term, so v0 is now that velocity that it reached at that first portion of its motion. Okay, and again, I'm going to keep an extra digit in here so that I don't introduce too much rounding error. So V0, it's kind of like throwing something upward at 87.7 meters per second. That's V0. And again, I don't know the time just yet. I do know that it starts above the ground. It starts at 1,200 meters above the ground. So if I can find t, how long it's um, rising and slowing down, I should be able to solve that for my y position. Okay. So when we first did problems where you launch something upward, we said at the peak, one of the things we know at the peak is that the velocity is zero. So I'm going to shift my thinking for a moment to the back to the velocity equation. So what I want to do is find the time that the velocity is zero. So I'm going to set this equal to zero. The acceleration is the downward acceleration due to gravity. I want to find how long it takes in time to get to zero velocity with that big starting velocity that it achieved through the first part of the motion. So my initial velocity here, again, we already said that was the 87.7 meters per second. So this, if I want to kind of note what time I'm talking about, it's the time to get to the peak that I'm solving for here. And that's going to look like subtracting 87.7 from both sides, dividing by negative 9.8 here. No square root in this one. That just equals the time. Let me double check my number. And I'm going to keep three digits for now, 8.95 seconds. So back to my diagrams. That would represent 
this amount of time. It's reached its top speed. Now it's slowing down for an additional 8.95 seconds to peak. That would also be in here. Okay. So now I know how long it takes to get to the peak. I can plug in 8.95 seconds here and here, remembering that I need to square it in that first term. So on my calculator, I can punch in 0.5 times negative 9.8 times 8.95 seconds, square it, plus 87.7 times 8.95, and then add in the starting velocity of 1,200 meters. And that should come out to equal 1,592 meters plugging in that time. So again, visualizing that. That's your max altitude here. So that takes care of C, maximum altitude. Time total to reach the maximum altitude would be the 27 or so seconds. We said 27.4, really. That's how long it was accelerating upward, plus 8.95 seconds to slow down to rest. We just need to add those up to get that answer. I get about 36.4, would actually be 3.5, I guess, seconds. Um, so 36.4 if I keep three sig figs, or just 36 seconds if I'm keeping two sig figs. Basically, you're adding 27 to 9, right? So that takes care of D. And then E, with what velocity does the rocket strike the ground, strike the Earth? So it's going to start to slow down. What I didn't show in the velocity plot is that once it reaches zero velocity, it's going to continue speeding up downward. So its velocity is going to become more and more negative in that last bit of time. All right, so E, again, I want to find a velocity. So I want to go to the velocity equation. But now I'm tracking the fall. So now that I'm tracking the fall from peak, now I kind of recalibrate and say my starting velocity is zero meters per second because it's reached its peak, it's at rest. I know the acceleration is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second per second. I need to know that last bit of time to solve this one. So I need to essentially figure out this time to figure out how far the velocity drops here. So again, I'd like to go to the velocity equation, but I don't have enough information yet to know the time. So when that's the case, you usually need to go to the position equation. And do some solving. So if I want to know how long it takes to reach the ground, the y position that I'm interested in is zero meters. Half the acceleration is half of g, negative 9.8. So I'm just going to say negative 4.9 times t squared. I don't know how long it takes to reach the ground yet. 
we're just tracking the time from peak to hitting the ground. So again, the V0 is zero. This term goes away. The starting position is that maximum height that it reached, the 1,592 meters. So now I have enough information to solve for T. So my algebra is going to look like subtracting 1,592, dividing through by negative 4.9 here, and then taking a square root to find T. That time, I'll double check my number, 1,592 divided by 4. 4.9 square root. And that with three sig figs actually comes out to be 18.0 seconds. So that represents this time. So another 18 seconds of motion. And now I can go back to my velocity equation. The acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second per second times 18 seconds. Starting velocity is zero. And that comes out to equal 176 meters per second. So that is the speed that it reaches when it hits the ground. So my graph, I probably should have made this line steeper because it's a, ste a steeper acceleration. So it's not really drawn to scale, but what you're finding here is after that 18 seconds that you are at really negative 176 meters per second. So that takes care of E. And then how long it is in the air, again, is just adding these three times. So basically 27 plus 9 plus 18. Which is going to be, with two sig figs, 54 seconds. That's the total total motion from blast off, reaching peak, and then hitting ground. So like I said, that's going to be more difficult than anything on the quiz. However, once you figure out that first bit of motion, it is kind of like an upward launch problem. So how long does it take to get to peak? You've got a new peak that's a grand total above the ground. And so that last part is like a drop from rest problem. So it's, it's a good one to know but your, your problems on the quiz will be a lot more focused than that. You won't have a combo type question like we see here. All right, any general questions on that one? There's a ton going on there. Okay.